Good day, everyone. I welcome you to the episode two of Chemistry of Selected Metals and Non-Metal. So for the second episode, which is episode two, I'll be working on Chemistry of Selected Metal. And we are going to pick one element from group one, one element from group two, one element from group three, just like that, we get to the end of the periodic table. So for the very first one here is sodium. So in the group one element, we have hydrogen, we have lithium, we have sodium, we have potassium, we have rubidium, we have cesium, and fasium. But please, as long as we are dealing with metal, we don't consider sodium as a, uh, sorry, we don't consider hydrogen as a metal. So most cases, we usually consider hydrogen as non-metal. And please, don't say hydrogen is a metalloid. No, 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 it's never a metalloid. Hydrogen is considered as a what? As non-metal. One of the reasons why hydrogen is placed in group one in the periodic table is because it has one electron in the valence shape. And most people will say, why not place hydrogen in group 7 in the periodic table? Because hydrogen loses one electron in its outermost shape. So that's why hydrogen, there's this controversy that hydrogen should be in group 1 or group 7. But please take note, hydrogen is never a metal. Hydrogen is a what? A non-metal. So for the group 1 element, we have six metals. We have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and what? And fracium. And all of them have the electronic configuration of S1. This one is 2s1, here is 3s1, here is 4s1, 5s1, 6s1, 7s1. So they have one electron in the s orbital. So please take note. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and fracium, all of them, they equally hydrogen. They are group one element, they are s block element, but all of them, they are non metal from lithium that to fracium, they are metal. Hydrogen is a what? A non-metal. So please, take note of that. Then, let's talk about the occurrence of sodium. Sodium is a very, very reactive element. Most cases, we consider our group 1 element. In fact, group 1 element, the most reactive element in the periodic table is fracium. So, followed by uh, cesium. So, we already believe, we have this belief that group 1 elements are very, very reactive. Talking about electropositivity, increases down the group and decreases across the period. Therefore, group 1 elements are very, have uh, uh, a higher electropositivity, they have higher metallic property, and therefore they are very, very what? Reactive. So if you look at this closely, you realize that sodium itself is also very reactive because it's a group 1 element. So sodium is very, very reactive, and because of its reactivity, it doesn't occur in isolation, like it doesn't occur on its own. So, Sodium can occur most cases in combined state. Let me use that. It does because of the reactivity. Sodium is very, very reactive, and because of its reactivity, it also occur on its own. So there is need for you to attach sodium to something else for the reaction for, for you to see uh, uh, for you to see it. For example, if you open sodium in this class, and let's say you brought sodium to this class and it's been exposed, before you know it turns to sodium hydroxide, and if you're not careful, it's going to turn to sodium trazocarbonate 4. So sodium is not something that can be in isolation. Sodium have to like be, we can't see sodium in isolation. So sodium, most cases they are found, not most cases, all cases they are found in combined states. So because of the reactivity of sodium, sodium can be found as a sodium trazonitrate 5 or sodium trazocarbonate 4. You can also find sodium in seawater as halide. That is a, a sodium iodide. We have sodium bromide, we have sodium chloride. All these ones here can be found in what? In seawater. We also have sodium rock as a rock salt. We have uh, that sodium chloride. So these are sodium chloride. It can be in form of seawater. It can also be in form of what? As a rock salt. Then sodium again can be formed, uh, can be found in a clay soil, which is sodium trazosilicate 5, 4 rather, sodium trazosilicate 4. This can also be found in a what? A clay soil or boras. Boras is Na2B4O7 dot decahydrate. So a question might come in this format. What is the formula for boras? Please, this is the formula or this is the compound of what? Of boras. And sodium, uh, remember, it can be formed in sodium trazonitrate 5 or sodium trazocarbonate 4. Yes. It can be, formed in, can be found in seawater, sodium iodide, sodium bromide, and sodium chloride. We have rock salt as sodium chloride. We have clay salt as sodium 
triazosilicate what? For so please take note why this one here is for boras. Let's quickly talk about the extraction of sodium. Sodium can be extracted in electrolysis of molten state, molten form of sodium chloride and calcium chloride using a down cell. Please take note. Electrolysis of molten, molten sodium chloride and calcium chloride. So how many percentage of sodium chloride are we using? We are using 60% of uh, sodium chloride and we are using, sorry, 40% of sodium chloride and we are using 60% of what? Of calcium chloride. 40% of this one and 60% of this one. And you already know that in electrolysis, there are two electrodes. We have one that is positively charged, we have one that is negatively what? Charged. The one that is positively charged is known as the anode, while the one that is negatively charged is known as the what? The cathode. So, why using a downside? I don't want to draw the full structure because it's bigger. So, why using a downside? Remember, if sodium chloride dissociates, we are going to have sodium plus plus what? Chlorine minus. Why if calcium chloride dissociates, we have calcium 2 plus plus what? Chlorine minus as well. So, but at the end of the whole thing, here is already chlorine, chlorine. Any of them can go to the anode. But this one now, we are displacing sodium at the what? At the cathode, because sodium is the one we are looking for. So, we are using a down set for this electrolytic process. Electrolytic what? Process. And please take note, using a what? A down set. A multi state of, multi form of, motin. A multi form of sodium chloride and what? Calcium chloride. The percentage of sodium chloride that is used is 40, while calcium chloride that is used is what? Is 60. Please take note of this percentage and the down say, then which of them is liberated at the cathode, which of them is liberated at the anode. Sodium is going to the uh, cathode, while chlorine here is going to the way, to the anode. So for the metallic property of sodium, the first one we have here is slave. all of them they have the same metallic property, all metal, most of them. If at all metal they have similar property as long as it's, it's a, a, a physical property. But for the chemical property, it cannot just be detected. You're looking at the metal. So all group one element, as long as they have the same valence electron, they have the same chemical property. So the number of valence electrons will tell us if they have the same chemical property or not. So, but if you look at the physical property here, the first one we have here is simply. Silvery, we have number two, metallic cluster with it, it shines or with flat light. We have another one, the gravity density of 0 0.98. The next one we have here, melting point of 97 degrees Celsius. And another one we have here is, is a good conductor of heat and what? Electricity. So these are the physical property of sodium. So how can we test sodium? Sodium can be tested using its compound, like what I told you before, sodium, naturally, it can, you cannot see sodium as an element occurring in isolation. Sodium is very, very reactive, so it's difficult for you to see sodium standing on its own. So even if you have sodium, let's say you have, uh, 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 maybe the next crystal that will, come, that will be coming to your mind is that, so sir, so you are trying to say there is no sodium on its own. Yes, there is sodium on its own. If you don't want sodium to react with every other thing, then you have to store sodium with paraffin oil, you have to store sodium with paraffin oil, or let's use naphtha, or you can even store it using toluene. So please take note of these three guys here. If you want sodium to be in isolation, which is if you want to see just sodium, not a sodium compound, then you are going to store sodium with paraffin oil, you are going to store sodium with uh, naphtha, or you store sodium with what? With toluene. So this is how you can store sodium to avoid unnecessary reaction, maybe reaction with the atmosphere, reaction with uh, 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 CO2. So to avoid that, you are going to store it using paraffin oil, naphtha, or what, or toluene. So how do you test sodium? As long as you can't really get sodium on its own, what you do is that pick a sodium compound. Then when you test sodium using a non-luminous flame, a non-luminous flame, what is going to give to you is a yellow color, a golden yellow color. So when sodium compound, rather when a sodium compound is tested using a low luminous flame, the product you are going to see is a yellow what product, a golden yellow color will be observed. So please, this is a test for what? For sodium. Let's quickly rush to the chemical properties of sodium. Sodium reacts with air. 
it reacts with water, it reacts with acid, it reacts with ammonia, and sodium also reacts with non-metals. So let's just write some reaction of sodium before we move on. So, so the first reaction I have here is with air. So let's write sodium. So when sodium reacts with oxygen, the product will always be sodium oxide. So let's balance this reaction. E yes, it's going to give us sodium oxide. And this sodium oxide as well is going to observe CO2 from the atmosphere. Sodium, like what I told you before, if you expose sodium to air, it means if you react with the oxygen, it's going to give us sodium oxide. And this sodium oxide is going to absorb uh, 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 water from the atmosphere to give us sodium hydroxide. It's going to give us sodium hydroxide. Let's confirm. Yes, two. Okay. It's going to give us sodium hydroxide. The reaction is balanced now. It's going to give us sodium hydroxide. And this sodium hydroxide as well, if it's going to absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. So sodium hydroxide here is going to absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. And when the sodium hydroxide absorb, absorb rather, not absorb, please. When it absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere, it's going to give us sodium trisocarbonate 4 plus what? A hydrogen gas. So this will be the product that will be formed. So the first reaction is sodium naturally cannot stand on its own. So whenever you expose sodium to atmosphere, it's going to form sodium oxide. And this sodium oxide is going to uh, 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 absorb water from the atmosphere. So when you absorb water from the atmosphere, or when you react with water, it's going to give us sodium hydroxide. And this sodium hydroxide again is going to react again with CO2. It's going to absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. Then it's going to give us what? Sodium trisocarbonate for plus what? A hydrogen gas. So that's for the first reaction there. Then for the second reaction, reacting sodium with water. Let's check for the product. When sodium reacts with water, we are going to have sodium hydroxide plus what? Hydrogen gas. So what about if we react sodium with an acid? Let me give you a common acid, which is HCl. So if sodium reacts with an acid, what this is going to give to us is that, remember, this reaction will give us so definitely but I want to show you something. Whenever sodium reacts with any acid at all, all the ionizable part of the hydrogen ion will be removed from the reaction. So hydrogen is removed. We have sodium chloride. As if we have H2SO4, it's going to give us... This H2 will be removed. This is a balanced equation. So this H2 will be removed as well, plus sodium, please, to give us Na2SO4 plus what? hydrogen gas. But what if you have an acid that is an organic, an organic acid reacting with sodium? What is going to happen is that this is the ionizable part of hydrogen ion in this reaction. So we are going to have CH3COONA plus what? Plus H2. So please, you are going to have something like this, as simple as that. So just take note of all this reaction I've, I've, I've pointed out. So first of all, if you react with acid, the hydrogen ion will be removed, then a salt will be formed. This is salt, and this is what we call sodium ethanoid. So when ethanoic acid reacts with sodium, it's going to form a sodium ethanoid. When sodium reacts with H2SO4, it's going to give us sodium SO4 plus what? Hydrogen gas. But please take note, whenever sodium reacts with an acid, whenever sodium reacts with an acid, an acid is salt will be formed, and hydrogen gas will be what? Will be liberated. So let me give you another one again. What about if sodium reacts with NH3? It's going to give us this ammonia. It's going to give us sodium amide or sodamide. You can call it sodium amide or sodamide. So you can, it's going to give us sodamide plus what? Uh, hydrogen gas. Let's confirm if the reaction is balanced. Uh, here should be two. Cis hydrogen. Here should be two. So the reaction is balanced. 2 nitrogen, 2 nitrogen, 2 sodium, 2 sodium, 6 hydrogen, 4 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen, 6 hydrogen. So the reaction is balanced. What if sodium reacts with a non metal? Let's put chlorine. This will give us sodium chloride. What if sodium reacts with uh, 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 mercury? Very good. Mercury is a metal. Please take note. So if sodium reacts with another metal, which is mercury, it's going to form. Amalgam, sodium amalgam. So this will be the product that will be formed. And this is for the reaction of what? Of sodium, chemical properties of sodium. So sodium has the ability to react with water. It has the ability to react with 
uh, air, he has the ability to react with acid, he has the ability to react with ammonia to form a, a, a soda mind. Then he has the ability to react with non-metal. Sodium also has the ability to react with hydrogen. And when sodium reacts with hydrogen, it's going to form a hydride. Sodium what? Hydride. If it reacts with a metal called mercury, it's going to form sodium amalgam. So please, take note of that. Then what are the uses of sodium? Sodium is used in the production of organic and inorganic compounds. I've been able to produce an organic compound. And these are inorganic compounds. So sodium is used in the production of organic and inorganic compounds. It's used as an antilog derivative. Not sodium itself. It's the compound of sodium that is used as antilog derivative. It, uses as, it can be used in the production of soap, detergent, paper, textile, and glass. It is used in neutralization reaction very well. And this is a very good example of that. Sodium hydroxide plus HCl is going to give us sodium chloride plus what? Plus H2. So this is a neutralization reaction, and sodium is used here. Sodium is used in the production of a common salt, which is sodium chloride, the one you use as table salt. Then sodium is used in, as a baking powder, and is also used as drying organic water solvent. So this, I've been able to explain 90% of everything about sodium. It's summary of chemistry of sodium as an element. If you find any part confusing, please feel free to drop that in the comment section. I will definitely attend to it. I have a question for you. Sodium is extracted using how many percentage of sodium chloride and how many percentage of calcium chloride? And what kind of cell do we use in the extraction of sodium? Please, I would love to get the answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode.